Hey everybody, uh, let's just uh, talk about this real quick. This is a course that we're doing in the Nordic Institute of Dental Education in Helsinki, Finland. Um, the dates are September 4th and 5th, and what we're talking about is combining things like the Emerald Scanner shown here, which is pretty much insane. It's the next scanner from Planmeca E4D Technologies with um, software like this, the design software, and we're going to be discussing um, surgical guides. So here we could just go through a case real quick to give you a preview. We designed two restorations there on uh, 10 and 11, tooth number 10 and 11, and we're combining that with the CBCT data. And we're going to go through how to do this. The first thing that I like to do is highlight the adjacent root areas um, in the software and the crown so that I have a clear and distinct representation of those anatomical structures when I'm virtually placing and planning this case. So the nice thing about Romexis is um, everything is just there, right there, included. So the scan that we just did, the design of the restorations on the Edentulist Ridge are all going to be able to be imported. And so I'm almost done highlighting these uh, root structures, and, and it's a really nice feature that has an automatic feature to it that tries to find those hard lines in the DICOM data for you. And those, so now we could see those areas have been re-imported into the 3D model. Um, and so now we're combining the scan. And here we have um, common anatomical landmarks that we're delineating here. The more the better. So you could basically do an infinite number of landmarks as you go around trying to find commonalities between these two separate and distinct models. One from the intraoral scan and one from the DICOM data. And so what's that, what's, once you feel like you have an adequate pattern and distribution of common data points, you are going to hit OK, and it's going to do a best fit algorithm and import that model into the DICOM data superimposed. And so the cool thing is now that we could see here, we're going to magnify this overlay. What you're looking for here is that purple line needs to be coincident with the actual anatomical structures, and it's it's identical. It's, it's absolutely in a a perfect alignment and this is critical because your whole entire plan is going to be based on this including your your actual surgical guide fabrication so now what we need to do is bring in the restorations that we designed in the plan CAD easy and so here we're just firing them in it automatically remembers where those are based on where you designed them um, so there's no alignment that needs to take place here and we could see that they dropped light right in this is a particularly difficult case because it's kind of an end-on occlusion and so it's really important that we get these implants from a plan here and don't just throw them in arbitrarily at the center of the ridge because then we'll have definitely some occlusal issues when we're trying to go ahead and restore this case. So let's do a fully guided. So we're going to go ahead and do um, the cam, cam log, cone log, promote heat line here, which you could see the sleeve is um, rendered in and attached to the implant and we're going to do another one here um, we'll switch it to a 3.8 for that cuspid area and we're just you know the, the, it's pretty intuitive You're just moving the implant where you think it would be um, best placed um, you have the CEJ of the restoration you have the soft tissue you have the bone and the adjacent teeth so you have everything you need and and um, for, the, for this particular case, we are going to probably do a screw retained restoration on the cuspid. So I'm making sure my implant is going to be emerging from the cingulum area of the restoration that I designed. And I'm going to be measuring, um, I like it to be two millimeters palatal to the CEJ and then three millimeters deep or apical to the CEJ. So those kind of two rules, if you see me measuring and now throwing in the lateral implant here and we're just going to be tweaking it and making adjustments in the implant centric view to try to get these re uh, perfectly aligned with my restorations and um, making sure they also measuring that 3-2 rule um, so 3 deep 2 palatal and we could see how they're coming out of those restorations in three dimensions here and I'm pretty happy with that. We can parallel those if we want to. Um, if it was necessary, say you were doing, um, you know, just easier to parallel them. And also the distance between, I like it to be over three. So we're about, you know, almost four there. So now we need to rotate those sleeves so that they're going to be in ideal positions. And it's really easy to do. You just 
drag that little bar and you can see the sleeves rotating and then you could get a good visual representation of that. So from here, it's just really easy. Once you have them where you want them, you're going to go to the um, surgical guide design module, set your path of insertion, and you're literally just going to circumscribe the area to which you want your surgical guide to fit. And it's going to quickly render that. Um, and then what you're going to then do is just trim that to your, to your liking. Um, and there's, there's some little things that you could do to make it a little bit better. So what I like to do is we're going to trim any kind of areas that might be held up in the mouth. So on that facial and lingual, we're going to trim that facial especially to make sure it's not going to be impinging on the maxillary buccal vestibule. And we don't need to cover all the teeth um, circumferentially, although you certainly could if you like a lot of retention. I'm going to add little water um, irrigation holes here. Um, to make sure that we get adequate irrigant. And here on the occlusals and cusp tips, I'm adding little holes so that I could verify that it's seating all the way around. Um, and you could see the little cusp tips poking through when you go to seat this the day of surgery. And that's it. The, basically, the only other thing left to do is brand it. And I'm going to be putting the surgeon's name here, who is um, the best surgeon I know. Uh, Dr. Zach Evans is going to be placing these. Um, he is actually um, going to be teaching this course in Finland. So if you want to come by and see him and see how he does all this stuff, he's, he's pretty amazing. So here we go. Now we're, we export that as an STL file. You could print it on anything. I happen to use the Formlabs printer. And so here we go. Here's the day of surgery. Dr. Evans is going to be taking care of this. Uh, he's a periodontist here in Charleston, South Carolina. We glued the sleeves in. We have a good fit. And everything's guided, everything is through, even the implants are going through the sleeves, all depth controlled. Um, it's a pretty straightforward and amazing process. All right, easy peasy guys. I really hope that you um, come see us in Finland and we could talk about this from nuts and bolts, how to do it from, from, from scan to plan, okay? So thank you for your time and this is just a little taste of things to come.